you so much for your love that took our place on the cross, Father. That it's so strong that you that you love us so much that you would do all that for us. Thank you for who you are, Jesus. We pray a blessing on this service. So, good morning. My name is Matthew Lunders. I'm the pastor here at Damascus Road International Church. And if this is your first time here, or if this is your 50th time here, we're very glad to have you. Thanks for coming today. Thank you for worshiping alongside us. Um, it's good to see faces that I know and love and faces that I'm meeting for the first time. We're glad to have you here. Um, as the ushers are up here, this offering just goes towards the work of the church. It goes towards... Um, renting out this space and the other things that we do throughout the community throughout the week. So you're free to give if you want to. There's no compulsion to give, but give cheerfully as the Lord puts it on your heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful today to be here to celebrate in your presence, to celebrate you and what you have done and what you have given. And as we come and give our gifts back to you, that's simply recognizing first you and what you've done and rejoicing in that. So may we be joyful today. May we be cheerful and glad as we stand here before you, as we sit here before you, and give you our honor and our praise with our lives, with our money, with our talents, with everything that we are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As those goes around, this week has been, or this weekend, has been a big weekend uh, in various ways. We have a couple of photos of the things that went on. On Friday night to Saturday morning, we had uh, an all-night prayer meeting. That was... More than 10 people of the church showed up for that to come and pray and to seek God in the early morning hours. Then Saturday in the morning and afternoon, we had the Serve the City project that had something like 60, 70 people that were involved overall throughout the day. And I think about 15 to 20 of those were Damascus Road people. Um, and then in the afternoon yesterday, we had the graduation of the UWC students. So about 10 students that have been involved in this church, they graduated, including Josh, our electric guitarist up here. Can you guys give him a hand? For Graduation, graduation party, and still coming this morning. So, way to go, Josh, for that. But the celebrations aren't over yet because we're having our service right now, and then this afternoon we're going to have a baptism. So, there are three people from the church who are going to be baptized today in the Moss River, and that's going to be an exciting thing, yeah? So, Anyone is welcome to come, the friends and family that have come down specifically for that. We're glad to have you here, uh, but anyone from our church is welcome to come and take part of that baptism and to uh, join with celebrating with them. But just because it's been a full week and doesn't mean we're not going to have more stuff going on throughout the week. So some of the announcements of things that are coming up next weekend is going to be the bike ride fundraiser for the food package. What that does is people ride bicycles and try to get sponsors for that. And that way, the money goes toward uh, providing food and other things for families or individuals that are in need in our city. So if you say, hey, I can ride a bicycle, please contact Marika and say, hey, I can ride a bicycle for that. If you say, I don't ride bicycles, but I can give money to sponsor someone who does to go towards that food package program, again, uh, please contact Marika with that. Also, uh, coming up during this week for DRUM, our university ministry, they're going to be doing a lot of outreach. So Wednesday night is a worship night, and then on Friday, starting from 2 o'clock till about 6 o'clock, they're going to be starting at the Freitoff and then going around and having various forms of outreach of getting to talk to people or give them flyers or share a smile or a hug or ask if they can pray with them or all these various sorts of things. So if you would like to join in just being a blessing to the people of the city, you can join with the university ministry. You don't have to be a university student to, uh, to go out with them, but they're meeting 2 o'clock at the Fratoff this Friday. You can find that information on the city, which is our church's online tool. Um, there's also next Saturday going to be a Serve the City dinner, and that is a cross-the-line dinner where we already have the people that we've invited that are coming for the dinner, but we need to have people that serve them the dinner and, and be a blessing to those that are in this community. Many of the people who are coming are those that um, may be known for their needs, but we want to get to know them by name. We want to get to actually interact with them and share the love that has been given to us with those that are in this community. So please help out with that, and if you want to sign up for that, good contact would be Ashna or Evelina Surio. 
And then coming up in two weeks from today, June 4th, is what's called Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate that the Holy Spirit was poured out on all people. And that happened as the apostles were together and they were praying, they were waiting on the Lord. So we're going to take some time that evening to wait on the Lord and have some worship and have some prayer. So that will be right here that evening. We'll have the normal morning service that Sunday. But then in the evening, you'll be able to come back and celebrate us with celebrate with us here uh, to have a time of worship and invite a friend to it or invite someone who likes good music. Um, hopefully it'll be a time that they can be touched by God's Holy Spirit as well. In between those two times, so there's the morning meeting and there's going to be the evening thing. Uh, on Pentecost, there's also a baptism. And we're having a water baptism today, but we have at least one other young man who said, I'd love to be baptized. I just can't do it today. How about on Pentecost? And we said, well, that seems biblical. How am I going to say no? So uh, we're going to have another water baptism also in two weeks from today. And if you go to the baptism today and you say, hey, that should be me. I, I need to make that choice as well. Come talk to me and maybe you can jump in for the baptism in two weeks. And uh, one last thing on the announcements. We have helpers that are needed to do things with the media team and the set up and tear down team. As you see all these things that are set up today, we do that each morning and then take it down each afternoon. And if you're someone who says, I can plug in something or unplug something, or I can carry something around, uh, or just I know how to push things. Any of those are really good skill sets for what we're looking for. You don't have to be a brilliant mind with engineering or some of these other things, just someone who's willing to have a couple of hands and arms and say, tell me what to do. Uh, I've been learning this over the last seven years and, you know, I didn't start out knowing exactly everything, but you learn as you go. So if you're interested in helping us out with that in the mornings before church or afterward, um, please talk to Basel or myself. Um, this morning we have a couple of God stories. These are testimonies or, or times that people share things that God has done in their life. Um, the first one I wanted to ask was uh, Mr. Koshi. He is the father of Jeremiah, one of the young men who graduated yesterday, but he's a visiting minister from Malaysia. Uh, he's pastored in churches as well as worked with Operation Mobilization. And so Mr. Koshi, if you would come and just give uh, an encouragement to the church, we're very glad to have you here today. Well, good morning. good morning. I bring you greetings from Malaysia. It's good to be here and to be able to worship with you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you, especially Pastor Matt and the servant leaders in this church, Damascus Road International Church, uh, for the way you all have been a part of Jeremiah's life, our son Jeremiah. I'm here with my wife. Sorry, I forgot to introduce her. <laughs> no, sorry, my wife is over there. All right, you've been so much. Thank you. And you've been a part of Jeremiah's life. You know, when God puts us in, brings us into his family, he places us into local parts of his family. And for Jeremiah, for the past two years, the RIC has been a part of Jeremiah's local family. And when we are a part of the family, we, we laugh together, we cry together, we encourage each other, and yeah, we're also supposed to spur one another on to love and good works, as well as from time to time to rebuke one another as well. That's part of what it means to be in a family. And I know that Jeremiah has grown over the past two years. And a major part of that is because he has been a part of a family like this, where there are people who cared for him, and he was in turn also able to extend care and concern to one another and to all of you, and I thank you for that. And I want to encourage you, I want to let you know that you have something very special here. Okay, to have so many nationalities here. How many are there right now? About 40? In this room right now? Yeah. 40. Yeah, I mean, this is something special. All right, you, uh, if you were all to stand up right now and pray in our own mother tongues, all right, it, it will be a foretaste of what it's going to be like in heaven one day. Where every tribe, there will be representatives from every tribe and tongue and nation worshipping the Lord and the Lamb who sits <laughs> upon the throne. And, and you have something like that special here. 
All right, so I want to encourage you all to, to treasure the moment. Uh, for those of us who are students in University of Maastricht, this will come to an end soon enough. Okay, and you'll be back on your way home to whatever countries you are. Uh, none of the UWC students are here, of course, for obvious reasons. They are crying over each other's shoulders right now as they say goodbye. All right, but to those of you at U University of Maastricht, treasure the moment. Take every opportunity. Can I encourage you? Take every opportunity you can to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all the opportunities that you have to be discipled. Uh, I have come to know one or two of your servant leaders. And, and God has placed a good bunch of servant leaders to, to serve you and to disciple you. And for those of us here who are, shall I say, resident in Maastricht for more than uh, five, four years, okay? Um, it is easy to slip into the rut, all right? To, well, this is the way I've always done things and life goes on. And staying here in Maastricht, I can, I can appreciate it is easy to take life a bit slower. I, I'm not criticizing the life in Maastricht, <laughs> all right? Life does go a bit slower here than in other places that I've been to. And I want to encourage you to take on, all right? We are living in challenging times. We are living in what I believe is the last days. I believe that the Lord, the Lord's return is not too far away. And so it is a clarion call for us to take on and to run the race that is set before us. As the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, to run the race that is set before us, to lay aside the sin that, that weighs us down and to just run looking to Jesus the pioneer and finisher of our faith. Amen. And so I want to encourage us to run that race with all that is that God puts within us so that one day when we see Jesus face to face, we may hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. So I leave that with you and uh, may God bless you. May God empower you to run this race uh, so that each one of us here may have nothing to be ashamed about when we stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Koshi. And then we also have Lada was going to share her story today. So one of our own or one who's been here for a while, please come up and share a bit about what God has done in your life. My name is Lara and I am currently a master student at the University of Maastricht. Today I want to share the story of what God has done in my life and in my family. My God story is about appreciating what God has done for me and is still doing in my life. I have written a blog about my story hiding on the hiding behind its anonymity and talked about it in a session with my counsellor, but never in an open and direct way such as this. But I know God has given me the encouragement I need to do so, with the hope that I would be a blessing to at least one person listening to me. Until I was 16, I had always told my family was doing well, better than my friends who had so many issues. I looked at them with pity as I listened to their heartbreaking story, thinking to myself that I could not understand what their life must be like. Little did I know that I was about to get a festive experience myself. <coughs> From my 60th birthday, everything I thought I knew took a different shape. Conversations about my dad thinking of marrying a second wife became the topic in my house. In Nigeria, where I come from, polygamy is common, especially in Muslim families, which my father's family happened to be. No one saw it as a problem, but I knew the story was different behind closed doors. At this point, my older brother was not living with us, and my sister was too young to understand what was going on. I had to deal with it all by myself. 
My dad wanted me to understand him and support him. My mom wanted me to take a side. They failed to see that I was only a child myself and that I was suffering too. The whole situation combined with my personality resulted in very negative results. I became a very bitter and cynical person. I believed no one was ever nice without a motive. I was always in defensive mode and ready to fight anybody that tried to get close to me. I would attend youth meetings in church meant for sharing thoughts about families just so I could talk about all the faults and wrong in it and how horrible they could be. I hated everyone, including my own parents. At the age of 19, I had become so bitter that I felt like a heavy load was hanging on me. I could almost touch it, but I could not get it off me. I was invited for a UK meeting at the church that I went to my mom and decided to go. There was a sermon about the prodigal son that day. I had heard the story time and again, but this time it was different. I could not stop the tears that kept rolling down my eyes. It was, of course, alarming to me. I never cried. I had not done so for years. It got to a point where I had to go to the bathroom. That day, the Lord saved my soul. That did not take away the issues of my heart. God had worked on my family and taken us through the difficult period, but the wound it left in my heart was still very fresh. I tried to just get through day by day, but my defensive nature was still there. I started loving my parents, but I still kept everyone at a distance. I had to make sure nobody could ever hurt me again. It was at this point that I met my counselor, who God used as an instrument to let me tend to my wounds. I had weekly sessions with her for the most part of my second year in the university. I cannot enumerate enough how God has been there for me. I would be here all day in order to do that. Year after year since then, God has continually poured his balm on the heart and the pains. It, it's always funny when people tell me I laugh easily or I seem cheerful. I know it is only by the grace of God I am who I am today. I look back and I am amazed. It has not been an easy journey. I am far from being a finished product. I still struggle with creating and maintaining relationships with people, but I know I am constantly making progress. I just want to use this opportunity to encourage everyone, especially children with families, going through difficult times. God has promised that he would never leave us, nor forsake us, and that he loves us even when it seems that no one else loves us. It might be difficult, but it helps to have someone to share your burden with you. I have been there, and I am always willing to offer a listening ear to anybody that needs it. God has only started with us. He is far from being done. Thank you. Morning, church. Good morning. Is on? Yes, okay. Uh, my, for those who don't know me, my name is Willem. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm here to pray with us this morning. Before I start praying, uh, I would like to share a little bit about what Pastor Matthew mentioned earlier. That last Friday we had the all night prayer meeting. Um, me and my wife we came a bit late because I had to work till midnight, 12 o'clock. So after that we got ready, and then we also went. To be honest, when I came home, I was like, I don't want to go, I'm tired, I'm done, you know, I had a full week of work, so I didn't really want to go, but my wife convinced me, and uh, I knew in my heart I should go, I just needed that little push at the moment, so, and when we were there, it was just really good, really good to be uh, with other Christians who are that passionate to spend the night with God, and I mean... Like the psalm says, it's better to be one day in the presence of the Lord than 1,000 days elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And it has really been a very good experience. And I would like to encourage you, if there is anything like this going on again, uh, just give it a shot. Give it a try. It's really good to spend the whole night praying and, and being in God's presence. So, 
And I believe that all our prayers will be heard. They will not be in vain. And so, having said that, let's all join in prayer as I go through these thank God cards and, and ask God cards. I have quite a lot with little time to go through them. <laughs> so, um, I'll try to rush. Uh, I, have, I always like to start with thank God's cards, so I'll go with, through this first. There's a card from an anonymous person who wants to thank God for all that he does for us that maybe we don't even see at certain times. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for who you are. Father, thank you that you are always there for us, always taking care in all our needs, providing for us, Lord. And so often we are focused on the things around us that we don't see the things that you are doing, Father. We, we're focused on certain problems. We're focused on things that we want. And we don't realize that you are working all around us, Father. So we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you that you are always faithful in providing and caring for us, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I have two thank you cards from Wonu. So she must be a very happy woman. <laughs> she, first of all, wants to thank God because she recently asked the church to pray for her neck. And a few hours later, the, it stopped hurting after three days of agonizing pain, she says. That's something to be thankful for. Secondly, she says she was super overwhelmed with op overlapping deadlines for her school courses because she was taking an extra course, and now two of her courses gave her extensions. So she wants to thank God for the favor. Father, we thank you for Wonu. Thank you that she can be a part of our community. And thank you for... The blessing that she is to all of us and thank you for everything that you're doing in her life father thank you for healing her father thank you for taking away the pain in her neck it's it's amazing to realize that you are a god who, who cares about us so much and that the miracles didn't stop 2000 years ago Lord, but you are still working among us today we thank you father and we thank you that you you care about everything about our lives whether it's you know, our health or our jobs, our school, our studies, everything. And so thank you for your favor in, in the studies of Wonu, Lord. And thank you for being there, not just for Wonu, but for all the students in this church, Father. Thank you for, for yeah, giving them the strength they need to finish their studies. In Jesus' name. There's a thank God card from Kevin and Natalie. I want to thank for the family and friends that support them and everything that and they want to thank God that they found a new house in Maastricht. Okay. Father, we thank you for the blessing of family. We thank you for the blessing of this church, for friendships that we have, Lord, and, and that we can be a part of one another's lives. Thank you that you are our example in all of this, that you have shown us how to love by laying down your life for us. Lord, and in the same way, continue to teach us to lay down our lives for one another so that we can be blessed by having family and friends around us and can be blessed by, by being that friend for someone else. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're doing in, in this area. And we thank you for providing also a place to stay, specifically for Kevin and Natalie right now, Lord, for, for, for all of us. Lord, as you always provide for us, thank you for a place that we can call home. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Yuka wants to thank God for the new car and for a holiday that is booked and also for three kids that are in great health. So, let's thank God for this. Father, we thank you. Once again, we thank you because there, you know, we could never thank you enough, Father. It's in the small things, in the big things, you continue working, Father. And so we thank you on behalf of Luca and the family. Thank you for providing for a new car, a way of transport, transporting them anywhere they have to go, Father, whether it's to work, to bring the kids to school, or to come to church. Father, it's a blessing to have a car. And so we thank you on their behalf. We thank you for the blessing of holidays, Lord. They could already book their holiday. And I just pray that they may have a wonderful time together as a family, and that in this they can see you working among them, that they can have a time where they can encounter you in, in a moment of rest, in a moment where they can just stand still and enjoy the moment, Father. 
and yeah, we thank you for, for the favor of, of being able to have a holiday every now and again. Thank you, Father. And we thank you for the children of, of Yuka and Claudia, Father. Thank you that you have given them great health. And thank you for the joy that they bring to the family and also to this church community, Father. Would you continue to bless them in Jesus' name? Joshua wants to thank God because Jesus was risen from the dead. And he drew a wonderful picture of the stone that was rolled away from the tomb. So, thank God for children. Father, we, we thank you for the work that you have done. Sometimes we're focused on the things that are happening right here and now in our lives. But let us never forget the wonderful work that you have done on the cross. That you died for our sins and that you rose from the dead. Thank you for being alive and giving us the strength that we need. Thank you for pouring out your Holy Spirit to live among us so that we can live in that resurrection power. In Jesus' name. Amen. This one is without a name. Someone wants to thank that I that he or she gets to go to a school camp and that he or she is loved at home. That's very cute. <laughs> Father, we thank you for, for caring for all of us, the smallest, the biggest, or no matter our background, Lord, you care for all of us. And we see in, in the life of Jesus how much you cared about children. And so thank you for these children who can rejoice about the things in their life, the things that are going on. Thank you that in, within this church there are children who can truly feel loved at home, Lord, and that, they, that this gives them the motivation they need for life, that they can enjoy every moment, that they can go to a school camp and be excited about this, Father. I pray that you bless this child in the name of Jesus Christ. So after having so much to thank for, still have quite a few prayer cards to go through, so let's get going. And a prayer card from Natalie and Kevin. Uh, Natalie has a lot of pain in the stomach for a long time now and it's not going away. And for Kevin, also for healing from colitis, something, however you pronounce it. <coughs> God knows how to pronounce it and what it really is. <clears throat> Father, we, we come before you and we humble ourselves. We're humbled for everything that you have done already for this community, for every one of us personally. And yet there's things that we still need. Father, our whole lives depend on you. Our lives are in your hands and we are nothing without you. And so we ask you on behalf of Kevin and Natalie for healing, Father. Father, would you touch the stomach of Natalie at this very moment, Lord, and take away the pain. Lord, that she may be strong and healthy again, so that she can come and attend church again next week. Lord, and that she can be a part of everything that's going on within this church community also throughout the week. Lord, that she may continue to be a blessing for her surroundings. Lord, that her health issues will not hinder her from from walking her life with you. And also for Kevin, Lord. <coughs> we pray for healing from this disease, Lord. All the pains that he has so often in his back. Or would you restore his body? Lord, I believe you have so many things still in store for him. And so I believe that you have better plans for him than this. Lord, would you restore his life? Show your greatness to him, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Prayer card from Marijke. She's asking for healing for her father. They found cancer at his lymph. But praise God that there are no more bad cancer cells found. Okay. Father, we come before you on behalf of Marijke and on behalf of her father, Lord. Lord, you know what's going on in his life, and you know that he's struggling with this disease, this horrible disease. Lord, but we know that nothing is impossible for you. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the one that shaped us in the wombs of our mothers. 
You, are, you have known us from before we were created, and nothing is impossible for you. And so we bring this Father of Marika before you, Lord, and we pray for healing. But would you restore his body, renew his strength, Lord, that his life may be a testimony for the people around him. Lord, and we thank you, we praise you that there are no other bad cancer cells found in, in other parts of his body. Lord, we thank you for, for yeah, keeping him safe in that way, Lord. And we, we trust you to do a mighty work in his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ask God card from Yuka. He's asking for health restoration, for a new house solution, and stronger nurse for child shepherding. Okay. Father, we thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are the ultimate father who loves and who, whose patience never ends, whose faithfulness never ends. Lord, we as humans may sometimes fall short and we can get upset about certain things when we feel like we're not in control and when things are not going the way we planned. Lord, but let us learn from your example and let us continually love the children that are among us as you so dearly love them. Father, we pray for you, God, that you continue to work in his life to, to work out this love in his heart, the love that you have for him, the love that you have for his children, Lord, that he may be filled to overflowing and that this may come out as he shepherds his children, Lord, that he may teach them in love and that he may truly be a father for them. And Lord, we pray for, for his health situation. Father, we pray that you restore his body, that he may gain new strength, Lord, that he may fully recover so that he can continue to glorify you in his life, Father, that he can go out to the nations and, and proclaim your name, Lord, that he may spread the gospel wherever he goes. Let me pray for a new house solution for him and his family, Lord, that they may have a place where they can be safe, where the children can grow up and, and, and feel safe, Lord, and, and that they may have this place that they can call a home. Where, where it feels good and where, where they can have a meeting and an encounter with you in everyday life. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's an anonymous Ask God card. But someone wants to pray for Situ's research presentation tomorrow. Pray that God helps her get the data she needs and that she is able to glorify God through the research. Father, we thank you for all the students that are in this community. And we thank you for their opportunity to be in Maastricht, to study and to learn. Lord, and thank you for giving them everything they need. Father, we thank you for C2 as part of this community as well. And we pray that you help her to get all the data she needs for, for her research, Lord, so that she may yeah, go beyond what, what expectations, that she may represent you in everything that she does and that she may yeah that she may blow away the minds of the people that she has an encounter with because they see something in her that they would also want or that they see the holy spirit within her and so i pray that she will do well in her research and that she may be successful in everything that she does lord in jesus name and closing off, there's one more Ask God card. Someone wants to ask that God will work in his or her family and save his or her brother, sister, and dad. Amen. That their home would be a Christian family. Okay. Father, first of all, we thank you for the blessing of Christian family life. We thank you for revealing your love to us and that we can share that love with one another. And we pray that for this person as well. This person has come to know you personally and has seen the love that you have. And we just pray that this may become a reality in the rest of the family as well. For the brother, the sister, and the father. Lord, that they may have an encounter with you as well. That they may come to know your love. And that their lives may be transformed. So that their family may be a Christian family. That lives by the love and by the example that Christ has set for us, Lord. We pray and we thank you for all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Uh, the preteens are uh, dismissed if they haven't gone out already, that they can have their own time. Over the last few weeks, we have had the blessing of having uh, visitors, pastors, Ken and Mary from Nakuru, Kenya here, sharing the word of God with us, and we're blessed to have them back today. He's shared about obtaining help from God for the times that we're in need, and not only that, but also being an instrument of God to preserve the destiny of other people, and I'm excited to hear what he's going to share about today. But as we welcome him, could you learn a Swahili word for us? Jambo means hello. Can you say that? Jambo. Jambo. Yeah? Jambo. Okay, one more time. Jambo. Jambo. So, Pastor Ken, if you would, please come up and share. Jambo. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jambo. <laughs> Maybe just before. I share what the Lord has put in my heart. I just want to welcome uh, 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 the Dicks and uh, Sister Nelly together with my wife uh, so that we may share a song. And I believe that you will be blessed. Welcome, Nelly, the Dicks, and my wife, Pastor Mary. Put your hands together even as they come. Yes. I want to welcome you to sing together with us. It's a, just a simple song, a worship song. Then we shall be blessed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Baba, 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 Baba,
Baba is in uh, Swahili. That is Swahili, meaning Father. Amen. And uh, Yesu means Jesus. Amen. And Roho means the Holy Spirit. So you can take it just the way it is. I believe that you are blessed. Amen. 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 Uh, this morning, it's afternoon. This afternoon, I just want to share with you a message titled, The Finishing Anointing. Amen. The Finishing Anointing. I believe that we all need the grace of God. Yeah. We all need the strength from God. We, know we all need the power from God to be able to finish whatever we start in this life. Spiritually, we need the strength and the power of God to be able to walk with Jesus day after day. Uh, physically, we need the strength from God to be able to accomplish whatever we need to accomplish in this life. So, the finishing anointing. We all know what to finish means. When you say, I have finished, it means that you brought it to conclusion. It means that you brought it to the end. It means that you've done it completely with nothing left to be done. So we need that anointing. We need that power. We need that strength in our lives to be able to bring everything that we start in our lives to the end. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is to start something and bring it to the end. It is to start a journey and reach your destination. Maybe I can explain to you what the anointing is. The anointing is the supernatural or divine power to enable you accomplish things. The anointing is the supernatural or divine power. Something divine is something that comes from God, not from man. So you need a power that comes from God to enable you to move forward, to enable you to go to the next level, to enable you to do things the way you've never done them before. And this power can only come from the Almighty God. This power can only come from the throne room of God. This power can only come from heaven. So we need to call God and tell God to release such a grace in our lives, men and women of God. You need the power, I need the power to enable me to move forward. When this power is released in your life, I believe that this power is able to attract good things in your life. The anointing of God the power of God, the strength of God will enable you to accomplish good things in your life. It will enable me to accomplish good things in my life. This power will attract favor in my life. It will attract favor in your life. You will go into places and because of the strength from God, because of the anointing of God, you will be accepted. Amen. Amen? Amen. So that power is what you need in your life. This power, this anointing, this strength will attract even finances in your life. <clears throat> this power will make doors open before you and before me. This power will connect you to people that you desire to connect with them. Because this power is unique. It comes from God and God alone. We need to tell God, release uh, the finishing anointing in our life. This power will connect you to destiny connectors in your life. This power will bring breakthrough in your life. This power will bring victory in your life. Even when you are, when you are going through some battles. Amen? Amen? You need the finishing anointing in your life. The anointing to finish will always give you the strength to stand. Even when things are going against you. When the currents, when the storms are moving into a life because of the divine anointing from a God, I believe that you will always stand and you will always have a new song and a testimony. Amen. 
we need to tell God, release the finishing anointing upon my life. For you to win in your life, for you to win in your situation, for you to win in the midst of the storms, for you to win in the midst of the rains, when the winds and the storms are rough, you need to tell God, release that grace in my life. The Bible says that the grace of the Lord is sufficient for you, and it is sufficient for me. We need the grace of God in our lives. Amen? Amen. You need that grace. I need that grace so that I may continue to forge forward in the name of Jesus Christ. The anointing to finish will make you defeat the enemies even in their own camps. The anointing to finish will make you stand even thing, when things are negative. Even, even when people are speaking negatively against you, because of the anointing to finish, you will always stand. You will always win in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To finish whatever we start takes hard work. I, I want to believe that the Lord has released that finishing anointing upon your life and in my, my life as men and women. But uh, we still need to be hardworking men and women. Amen? Amen? Yeah. So to finish strong, you need to be hardworking man or woman. You need wise guidance for you to finish strong and well. Stay with people that will add good things, good morals in your life. People that will put a plus, not a minus in your life. People that will strengthen you. People that will guide you to the right direction. Not with people that will take you to the wrong direction, but with people that will lead you to the right direction. So you need to be hardworking. You need to be wise. So you need wise guidance. You need to be self-disciplined if this anointing will work in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen? And the other thing you need in your life is to be patient. Right. Sometimes God will say, wait when you want to move. <coughs> he will make sure that the, the light before you is red, not green, That's right. not yeah. orange. He will say, wait. I love, I love what the Bible says. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When you have patience in you, then the Lord will renew your strength and by his grace and by his anointing, you can be able to lift yourself to the next level. We need patience in our lives if this anointing is to work for us. Amen? Amen. Anyone with a vision can start a big project. Anyone with a dream can start a big project. I don't have doubt with that. But vision and dreams without anointing to finish and wisdom often results in unfinished projects and goals. So having vision, having dreams, having goals, having targets in your life is not bad. It is very good. But without the anointing to finish, my brother, without the strength from God, Without the grace of God, without the favor of God, you cannot bring it to an end. That's right. So we need to invoke God in everything that we do. Amen. Amen? Amen? Invoke God. Invoke God. Bring in God in everything that you do. Let us go to the word of God that I'm going to read today. I'll read a couple of scriptures. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 7, verse number 8. Chapter 7, verse number 8. Ecclesiastes. The finishing anointing. The finishing grace. The finishing strength. Ecclesiastes 7, verse number 8. The Bible says, The end of a matter is better than its beginning. The end of a matter is better than its beginning. Patience of spirit is better than the haughtiness of spirit. I want to take part A of these scriptures. 
whereby the Bible says the end of a matter is better than its beginning. Sometimes we judge people by the way they start their projects. We judge them by the way they do their things. We judge them because maybe their beginning is small. But I love these scriptures because it is an encouragement to you and to me. Because it says the end of a matter is better than its beginning. It doesn't matter how I started. What matters is how I will finish. What matters is how you will finish. How we will finish. Amen? Amen. So the finishing of a thing is the most important not the way you started. Back home when we started our church, we started in a way that uh, maybe if we call some of you to come into that service, maybe you could have said, this is not the place where I'm supposed to be. We started by sitting on logs and stones and things like that. And I remember people were passing by and laughing at us because the starting was not good before the eyes of men. But I believe in heaven it was good before the sight of God because the Bible says the end of a matter is better than its beginning. God had a plan with that church. God had a plan with that ministry. It doesn't matter wherever you are now. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter how you started. What matters is how you will finish. God will always release the anointing to finish to man. So I believe there is a portion of an anointing for you. I believe there is a, push, a portion of a grace for you, strength for you. Each and every one of us that is here, there is a portion of anointing to finish for you. So whatever you are doing, just keep on keeping on in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe by the grace of God, you will be able to do it right. You will be able to move forward. You will be able to accomplish it no matter how it is now. God has given you that grace. God has released that grace for you to finish whatever you are doing. So don't look at where it is now. Don't look at how small it is now. Don't look at it the way people are looking at it. Don't listen to the negative voices or what people are saying about whatever you are doing. Just focus on the end of what you are doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is my prayer today that the Lord will release this anointing and this grace and this strength to each and every one of us in this sanctuary today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That we may be able to finish whatever we lay our hands on. In the name of Jesus Christ. If I am a student, maybe my parents are not with me in Maastricht. May the Lord enable me to finish my education. May the Lord enable me to finish my career. If I'm a businessman, just started my business the other day. May the Lord release that power and that anointing to enable me to finish whatever I have started. If I've just been married, may the Lord release the anointing to finish in the name of Jesus Christ that this marriage will go to the end. It will last to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. The finishing anointing is unstoppable. The finishing anointing will always flow and overcome every challenge or obstacle standing on its way. You look in the Bible, you will see the story of Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter number 2, verse number 17 to 20, and even chapter 4 and chapter 6. You will see when Nehemiah decided that he wants to uh, rebuild the walls of uh, Jerusalem, you will see that there was opposition from Tobias and Sanballat and all the rest of the people. But because of the finishing anointing, the wall was rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The wall was repaired. Anytime the Lord uh, directs you to do something, please do it like you will never do it again. Because the finishing anointing is upon you. It doesn't matter what the opposition is. It doesn't matter what people are saying. Just believe in God and also believe in yourself that whatever I have started must come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Nehemiah was opposed 
but he stood his ground. He said, this wall must be repaired. This wall must stand again. This wall must be rebuilt again. The finishing anointing was working upon his life. Tell your neighbor, you need the finishing anointing. Just look at them. Look at them with a smile. Tell them you need the finishing anointing. <laughs> it is my prayer that you shall finish well in Jesus' name. It is my prayer that you shall finish strong in Jesus' name. In your marriage, may you finish well. In your family, may you finish well. In your business, may you finish well. In your job and your career, in your education, and even in your life, it is my prayer that you shall finish well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because of the finishing anointing. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter number 4. We can read it together. Zechariah 4. Verse number 6. The Bible says, when he, Then he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, What are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become a plain, and you will bring forth to the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Verse number 8, I love this verse. Also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house and his hands will finish it. You can put your name there where they are saying Zerubbabel. You can say the hands of Pastor Ken have started this work, have started this building, this house, have started this business and the hands of Pastor Ken will bring it to pass. See yourself in that picture. I will finish it in Jesus' name. The Bible says, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Verse number 10, for who has despised the day of small things? Your beginning may be small. Your beginning may not be good. It may not be pleasing, even in your own eyes. But I want to thank God because the end will be greater in Jesus' name. Your end will be better. Your end will be brighter in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the finishing anointing will enable you to finish well in the name of Jesus Christ. May the finishing anointing protect and sustain you for whatever you begin must come to pass. When you do something, may it prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that there are some people that start projects and they don't finish? You start a business and you don't finish. You start building a house and you don't finish. Something happens in between and maybe you become sick, maybe you, are, you lose your job, maybe something happens and a, a member of a family dies and you cannot finish it. May the Lord release the anointing to finish in your life that nothing will stop you from whatever you've started to do in this life in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. amen. May you not stagnate or die prematurely during whatever you are doing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us go to 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Second Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 7. We're just walk, walk, having a walk in the Bible. Then in a few minutes I'll be through. 2 Timothy 4, 7, the Bible says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. The life that we are living, you have to be a fighter. You have to fight. 
you have to push. You have to be a pusher. Amen? Amen. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have fought the good fight. So you have to fight it well. I have to do it well. I have to do it wisely. If I am to win, if I am to bring it to the end, if it must come to pass, I have to fight it well. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. So you have to finish the course. You have to finish the race. You have to finish whatever you are doing in the name of Jesus Christ. Through the finishing anointing, may you achieve victory in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May your present be better than your past in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. It is all about how you receive it. Because I believe that God is speaking to your heart and to your spirit. The finishing anointing was working upon Jesus. And Jesus declared on the cross that it is finished. It is finished. If you look at the life of Jesus, you will see that because of the finishing anointing that was upon him, he went about doing good. May the finishing anointing cause you to do good in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. When people look at you, may they see Jesus. When they look at you, may they see God in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to bring before you this statement. The world never celebrates a starter. It only celebrates a finisher. In our country, Kenya, we are known for running long distance yeah. marathon. And when we run, we mean business. <laughs> <laughs> so if we take, let's say, 10 people to come to Amsterdam to run the 42 kilometer race or whatever race, the long race, we take 10 and then two go to the end and then eight withdraw. We cannot celebrate the eight. We'll always celebrate the two. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. The two that finish, these are the people that we shall celebrate. It is my prayer that God will release this spirit upon your life that you may be celebrated in this life in Jesus' name. May people celebrate you because whatever you are doing, you are bringing it to pass in Jesus' name. The world will never forgive a man who started well and finished badly. It is my prayer that you will not be in this category of men and women that started well but finished badly. Thank God today because this word is here to encourage you, Amen. to strengthen you, Amen. to take you to the next level, to uplift your spirit so Amen. that you may finish well. People yeah. always celebrate a man who finished well. May you be celebrated in Jesus' name. May I be celebrated in Jesus' name. In my marriage, in that relationship, may you be celebrated. In your job, may you be celebrated. In your academic work, may you be celebrated. In your family, may you be celebrated. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray. And even as we pray today, It is my prayer that the Lord will cause you to finish strong and well in Jesus' name. It is my prayer that the finishing anointing will break every yoke out of your life and out of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. That we shall stand strong like never before in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for your sons and your daughters that are seated in your presence in this sanctuary today. Father, you know 
our beginning to our end. Father, you know what some of us have been going through. Father, you know how some of our grounds that we are standing on have been shaky. You know, Jehovah Father, how some of us have been discouraged in this life. You know, God, how some of us have been giving up in this life because of our situations. But today we thank you for your word that we've just received because it is here to strengthen us. It is here to encourage us, Lord. If the other man was able to finish well, it is my prayer today that even me, I will finish well. If they were able to pass in their exams, excel in the academic work, God, today I want to believe on behalf of this man and this woman that they shall also I excel in their academic works, Lord. If some of these people that are living in this world, Jehovah Father, they are living a life that is bright, then God, I want to believe you that the finishing anointing will cause me to have not only a good life now, but also a bright future in the days to come. Today I pray, Jehovah Father, that you will release a measure of the anointing to finish upon each and every man and woman at the sound of my voice in this sanctuary. I pray that the Spirit of God will strengthen us in our spirit, it will strengthen us in our bodies, it will strengthen each and every part of our life. That Jehovah Father, from this day, Jehovah Father, we will not despise ourselves, but we will see ourselves as sons and daughters of God in the kingdom of God. Let there be the flow, Jehovah God, let there be the touch of God upon each and every life represented today. Jehovah God, I pray for them that are weak in the spirit, that Lord, you will quicken their spirit, you will strengthen them in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Jehovah Father, them that came in discouraged, that Jehovah Father, through this anointing to strengthen, the anointing to finish, that Jehovah Father, they will leave this place encouraged in the name of Jesus Christ. And even to them that do not know you, Lord, you will Bring them to a place of having an encounter with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Them that came in weak in their body, sick in their body, Lord, I pray that this anointing will bring strength to them, strength to their bones in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jehovah Father. I pray for every family represented here. I pray for every marriage represented here. Any marriage that has been going through storms, Lord, I pray for the release of a special grace, a special anointing upon that marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any family that has been going through fire and through trouble and through storms, Lord, I release the anointing to finish well as a family upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Any relationship afflicted or affected negatively, Lord, may this anointing to finish work for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be grace, grace in this place, in this congregation, in the families, in the jobs, every life represented in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank Thank you, Father. Even for Pastor Matthew and uh, Christine, Lord, I thank you for the anointing to finish upon their lives. Yes, Jehovah Father, just like it happened with Zerubbabel, may they finish well. May they finish strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Enable them to do exploits, Jehovah Father, not only in Maastricht, but all across the globe, because the finishing anointing is upon them. We honor you, Father. We adore you, Lord. We appreciate to Jehovah Father, even for the works that we've been doing in this place. May you bless your sons, may you bless your daughters in the name of Jesus we pray and we believe and everybody say it, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. I don't know if you were one of those kids that ever liked to do the like connect the dot pictures, were, were you like that at all? I was, for sure. Um, I like connecting dots, and I think if you've been paying attention today, I think God has been kind of putting some dots there for us to connect that I hope that, that you've been hearing, that, that God has something moving forward for us. As, as you heard from Pastor Ken, to have that, that anointing, that power of God to finish. As you heard from Lada, that, that none of us is a finished project 
yet, but that we're progressing. As you heard from Koshi, that we are wanting to stand at the finish line, knowing that the Lord is coming back and that when he is, that we want to stand in here, well done, that we finished well. So I believe that God truly is speaking to some people today about that through the mouths of two or three witnesses. I hope that you've heard that message, that God's encouraging you and maybe giving you a little prod to keep moving forward. What I want us to get to do for just a little bit is to split into groups of maybe three or six people and, and share something in your life that you feel God is, is working towards a finish in. What is something that, that you want to finish with God's help? And just take about ten minutes to talk about that in your groups. And after that, I'll come back up and I'll, I'll do a formal um, goodbye for us, a formal closing, a formal benediction. But take some time just to chat with one another about what God is saying in your heart about something that you can finish. Yeah? So take that moment now.